hello saints and possibly some future saints today we have our fifth study in the series of studies called hidden truth and uh, if you're joining this study for the first time let me say it's very important you start at the beginning with part one then part two and so on uh, this entire eight part study is designed to give you the tools necessary to share with you techniques needed in order for you to thrive to uh, encourage your growth in the body of Christ and all of this is done by rightly dividing and knowing certain things which are, are actually hidden from the church today so moving along with this study part 5 of hidden truth you know there's no way that I can tell with a hundred percent certainty just who saved and who's not now there may be clues in the way the person presents themselves but in the end I'd be lying if I told you that I could tell uh, you know without a doubt if someone was truly saved or not saved only God knows the things hidden deep within each of our hearts he knows his children by name he even knows the exact number of hairs that you have on your head and for some of us that's probably not that hard to keep track of but the point is and you know he knows which of us belongs to him and which of us does not belong to him so it's really that simple he's the one that discerns between the sheep and the goats the wheat and the tares now one of my main motivations for doing this study is the concern I have for people who mix the Gospels those who choose not to rightly divide and thus have no real understanding of God's Word and they may in fact not be saved even though they think they are or just because they've been told they are doesn't mean they are now, sadly believing uh, they're saved because you know they believe something other than the gospel for today given to us by the Apostle Paul by revelation from Jesus Christ that's why I believe it's critical to rightly divide God's Word to have a right division of Scripture firmly fixed in our minds right from the start so we can establish a solid foundation in which to build upon a foundation that acts as a shield of protection from believing in another gospel or perhaps believing in the doctrines of demons since the very beginning Satan has been confusing and confounding so many people including many of today's preachers the sad truth is the majority of preachers out there are teaching a mixed gospel they're mixing the gospel of the earthly program with the gospel of the heavenly program mixing the gospel of grace with Paul's mystery gospel or the gospel of grace for the body of Christ now we see it in Colossians chapter 2 uh, chapter 2 verse 11 through 15 it says in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ buried with him in baptism wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together with him having forgotten you all trespasses blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us which was contrary to us and took it out of the way nailing it to the cross and having spoiled principalities and powers he made a show, a show out of them openly triumphing over them in it now it may be your only hope that God the righteous judge will bend his rules to allow the gospel confused into his glory but let me just say here now I cannot find one place in God's Word where it says 
he'll be bending his own rules on behalf of the confused. This is why it's so concerning to me. It crushes me to think that dear friends, family members, loved ones will be left behind to endure the horrific trials that are quickly heading this way. Left behind because they've all believed this mixed gospel of lies and never understood the true gospel because they weren't taught to rightly divide scripture and were convinced of another, another gospel of confusion that they thought was the right one, just like Cain did. And let's not forget that Cain chose to place good works above what God commanded by dispensation. These poor people are not studying to show themselves approved unto God. Workmen needing not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the worth of truth, paraphrasing 2 Timothy 2.15. It's important to understand that God dispenses one program or gospel at a time, folks. He's not the author of confusion. God never places people under two dispensations at the same time, two gospels at the same time. He's a God of order and right division. Seeing all the false teaching in the world, even worse, seeing all the false teaching within the body of Christ, weighs heavily upon my heart and it grieves me greatly. You know, many members of my own family refuse to believe the message of salvation in Christ Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. The gospel of grace alone, given to our beloved Apostle Paul. They refuse to believe the simplicity of today's gospel, and instead they apply their own versions, adding good works to the mix. Mixing two gospels into one leads to confusion and ultimately may lead to hell fire. You see, people today are refusing to believe the simple gospel, just like they refused the gospel back in Noah's day. They laughed and made fun of old Noah, and then they all died in the flood. Only eight people believed back then, and only eight people were saved too. Moving on, let's look at an overview of the Bible. Perhaps it'll give you a better idea of how God's Word is laid out and how it all unfolds. Now, the Old Testament deals with the creation and early man created in God's image. We see the flood, Noah's Ark, and the establishment of Israel as a nation, the chosen people of God. The nation of Israel chose bondage by choosing the law to be placed over them. We read in Exodus 19, uh, yeah, Exodus 19, 8. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. Saints, God knew that they couldn't keep the law, but because they'd chosen it, He allowed them to make an attempt so they'd eventually see that they couldn't keep the law. No matter how hard, no matter how hard they tried, they'd still need to rely on Him and Him alone. They were filled with pride, stubborn, and they failed miserably. And in their pride, they continued to reject God and His attempts to woo them back to Himself. Now, towards the end of the Old Covenant or the Old Testament, God goes silent for over 400 years. Then something absolutely amazing happens. He sends his son, born of a virgin, conceived by the Holy Spirit to minister to man in person, face to face, mano el mano. The four gospels of Mark, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John give the Jews and the rest of the world insight into the earthly ministry of Jesus. Jesus himself said in Matthew 15, 24, But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In other words, he didn't come for the Gentiles. He came for the Jews. If you read through the gospel accounts, you'll notice that when Gentiles were involved, Jesus treated them 
just like they were dogs. And it's because he, he, he wasn't sent to them. He was sent specifically to and for the Jews alone. The biggest problem we have today are Christians who read the four Gospels and think that they apply to them for today, when in fact, they don't. Rightly dividing reveals to us that the four Gospels are all about the Jews, about their program, about their program of the earthly kingdom. It has nothing to do with the body of Christ or the heavenly program. You know, that's, that's to and for us today. Given to us by Apostle Paul, revealed to him by revelation from Jesus Christ himself. The kingdom gospel spoke of uh, in the four gospels is mail sent to the Jews. It's not our mail. So we, we need to stop reading other people's mail and making it our own. And that's where we need to start, folks. Because the Jews rejected their mail. They rejected their Messiah. Their program has been set aside. And God revealed the secret program that he had ready all along, but kept secret in himself. Now, that through Apostle Paul, salvation would be given to the Gentiles. The body of Christ would be built making the Jews jealous until the fullness of the Gentiles comes rolling in. And my thoughts on that fullness is that it's going to be very soon, friends. In Romans 11, 25, we read, and this is Paul speaking, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. That concludes our study for part five. Thanks for studying with me, everyone. I'll see you shortly with part six of Hidden Truth. Peace and grace in Christ Jesus be unto you and your families.